And white supremacist, uh, supremacist extremism cases would you would all fall under so-called domestic terrorism? Correct. Yes. My understanding is that the remaining 80% of FBI's pending counterterrorism cases would be char characterized as the international, or we call you called them H. I hate these labels, by the way. It drives me as a Muslim. Like I just hate them because it automatically makes me feel like uh, people are targeting those of different faiths and colors and so forth. But uh, call HVE cases. So I think you're the 80% left from that budget. The resources are going to no. No. So. Okay. We have approximately 4,500 to 5,000 terrorism cases. Okay. Of that, approximately 850 domestic terrorism cases. So okay. if you take the rest, those are international terrorism cases. Okay, so... So we have a, approximately 1,000 homegrown violent extremist cases, and so, approximately 1,000 So the ISIS HVEs, affiliates. those those folks are falling under this, this... International terrorism. Okay, so one of the things that came up um, is... And, and it's a good question to you, Mr. McCarr, or anybody else that'd like to answer. Do you think we should have a domestic terrorism statute? I, I will say as a former prosecutor, as a former investigator, I want every tool in the toolbox and I want options. So if I can have but more Mr. options, McGarity, so I would say I want another tool in the toolbox, yes. but I'll defer to the Department of Justice of course. Uh, to, to work with Congress if there's a, a statute. So the tools we have is not enough? I mean, if somebody's threatening to, to kill people based on their faith, to kill people based on their beliefs and or just, you know, that kind of f sort of, um, you know, I loved how you said any violence is threat to society, right? Any so form of violence. And I appreciate that. But there's not enough right now to give you all power. So I want to give you an example. So I've been in office for about six months. And when you get something like this attention, Congresswoman uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and ragheads Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar, I was totally excited and pleased when I heard about 49 Muslims were killed and many... Many more were wounded in New Zealand. This is a great start. Let's hope and pray that it continues here in the, in the good old USA. The only, only, the only good Muslim is a, is a dead one. How is that enough, not enough, to fall under domestic terrorism if they're targeting solely based on my faith and others and saying that a good Muslim is a dead one, obviously directed to me. By the way, they copied in this threat to my office. They copied the US Department of Justice, the President, Department of Homeland Security, and so forth. And we get so many of them, and I keep asking, what happens? What happens to these individuals? Are they you know, I want, I'm, I'm being sincere. I'm not trying to, I'm really sincere. I'm a mother. So I, have to, I want to go home to my two boys. So um, first, um, my empathy. I, 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 I'm in charge of domestic terrorism and international terrorism. I don't differentiate either when the threat comes in, nor does the FBI. We work on both the same. And I appreciate that. And I hear that throughout your testimony. It's very consistent, Mr. McGarity. But that, how come we don't have enough tools right now? to pull these people up in, because this is a format, and you can see can, there's can a pattern. You, well, there's two parts to that. So I can tell you, the FBI, the Joint Terrorism Task Force, we are working hard, as was said earlier. We are working hard. If there's another statute that you think is needed, come, come talk to the Department of Justice, absolutely. I mean, I think they've said that during the last uh, testimony back in May. Um, those type charges, as you're explaining that, I. I want to arrest that person before they do something. That's right. I have to, right? Right. What am I going to do? I'm going to look at any charge I can do. Probably in that case, if it gets a little more specific with the violence and targeted violence, I'm going to use 18 U.S.C. 875, an interstate communication threat. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm going to do. So, and we do that every day. And we actually do it more. And I'm not trying to be argumentative here either. I'm just telling you, the men and women of the FBI are out here working this threat hard. And we, we arrest more of our subjects on domestic terrorism than we do international terrorism. And we're doing it as We don't have as we enough can. resources, I think, being spent on that. And you know, Mr. Schiffer's made it's a great a, point because I, I am for, and I want to know my, I want my colleagues to know, I go, I have my coffee hours, I have people protest. I absolutely welcome freedom of speech. I, I welcome anybody that has an opinion, even about my faith, but to get to the point where they pass it towards a threatening life. And, and, and really, I mean, to me, that is enough. Sometimes I, I you know, the protected speech, and, and that's something we have to be very careful and tread very carefully, uh, very, very carefully with that. 
But and it, 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 to that point where this person, where I feel like if it came from somebody of different, and, and no matter what, I, as we try to proceed, we say that's not true. But I feel like if they were Muslim or black, they would be handled differently. Even the threat that we had in Florida, they released him on a tether. I had to go to Florida the same weekend. I couldn't believe they released him on a tether. And I've been on the other end, you know, defending many people that were wrongfully accused and wanting to, I couldn't get them on bail for the smallest incident of, you know, attempted assault and so forth, right? A serious offenses, I believe. But in many ways, they, these kinds of incidents, when it comes to threats of life towards other people based on, you know, somebody of Jewish faith, Muslim, uh, being black in America, this anti-blackness movement that we have, when, when do we take those so seriously as, as, as a movement that is obviously pushing violence? I mean, when do, when, when, I mean, at this point, you're letting the person out on a tether I know you're not. I know you're not, Mr. McCarty. And like, what scares me about your, you know, kind of not requesting, but you're saying, do you, do you think we should have domestic terrorism statute? What scares me about that is that we're expanding, and I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman, that we're going to allow this big balloon of, of then, we're still going to be leaving people out. I feel like if they're threatening the life of someone else, that alone should be just enough for us to get them on it if it's based on and it's based on hate because they're mentioning a faith if it's based on color and so forth like sexual orientation that should be enough um and i mean i i commend you all in trying to to keep our country safe but i feel like almost like we need to be proceeding in a way that we're spending enough resources and money with the people that are here now that are, are threatening lives of, of fellow Americans. Thank that, you. I yield. I'm so sorry. Thank, Thank you, you, Ms. Talib. I was so mesmerized by your statement. I lost track of time there. So that was uh, my fault. 